Chapter 7 Eight Days Before the Wedding Brittany eyed herself critically in the mirror. It's all the rage, the saleswoman assured her. If it's not the best of your collection, we don't want it, a dismissive Naomi declared as she sipped a fluted glass of champagne from the white sofa. A Crawford cannot be seen in anything but the best. Dear, it makes you look beautiful, sniffed Dottie, holding a crumpled tissue to her eye. Gabe's mom had been nothing but supportive throughout the entire afternoon they had been searching for a wedding dress for Brittany. Brittany was more than glad she had invited her soon-to-be mother-in-law to the bonding experience. The dress is very lovely. Now, in the third shop of the day, Brittany was starting to doubt she would find her dress. It's not the dress, declared Tara as she noted her friend's reaction. I thought dress shopping would be easier, murmured Brittany as she tugged on the silky bodice of the dress. Try on a dress, it fits, and buy it. There are so many choices, and none of them feel right. You'll know it when you see it, assured Dottie. I remember going dress shopping for my wedding. I went to Italy to one of the best designers. We talked patterns and materials. Then a month later I returned and my dress was finished. It was exactly what I wanted. What about a veil? the saleswoman suggested. Sometimes all you need is the final touch to make you see the whole picture. I'm not wearing a veil, decided Brittany. She didn't like these cookie-cutter dresses which were made for models. Tara, could you please help me out of this? Not wearing a veil? sputtered Naomi. You need to wear a veil. It's tradition. Brittany left her mother to expound on the traditions of weddings while she and Tara went to the change room. There's another store just a couple of doors down, noted Tara, as she untied the corset backing. Unless you're getting tired of this. Then we can try another day. I was hoping to get this done today, sighed Brittany with regret. We have the house inspection tomorrow. The bachelor party is this weekend, and I promise to dedicate time to all the little details I have changed about the wedding. Dottie and I are ordering flowers. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to find blue flowers in the right shade at this time of year? Then I have to go over all the new accounts for work. You don't have to look over the new account. I can take care of it, replied Tara firmly. You're getting married in a little over a week. The wedding should be your priority. Slipping off the dress... Brittany breathed a sigh of relief. Why are these dresses so uncomfortable? Maybe we need to select simpler dresses, mentioned Tara, which is hard to do with your mother. Brittany pulled a face. She just wants the best, which means bigger and flashier. It's your wedding, not hers, advised Tara as she set the dress aside on a waiting chair. She is not the one who has to wear it. True, nodded Brittany as she pulled on her clothes. I guess we'll look at the last shop. I'm not holding out much hope, though. We will find your dress, said Tara soothingly, even if we have to hire an Italian designer like Dottie did. I don't have a month, Brittany smiled as she grabbed her purse. I doubt even the best designers could get it done in time, no matter how much money I throw at them. It's just not realistic. I need a ready-made dress, which doesn't require extensive alterations. Are you sure about this? Suddenly asked a serious Tara. It's all happening very quickly. I know you've been in love with Gabe forever, but he's not exactly in love with you. I have five years and a baby to change his mind, replied Brittany. I know you don't like him, but there's no one else who has ever made me feel the way he does. I'm just worried on your five-year anniversary he's going to serve you with divorce papers, a worried Tara said. He has hurt you so much over the years. I just want you to be happy. I will be happy, Brittany assured her. She came forward to give Tara a hug. I know you're concerned about me. Maybe you will have to help pick me up after the five years if I can't convince Gabe to stay in the marriage. But I'm convinced I'm going to be happy for the next five years at least. If nothing else, I'll still have the baby as well. And that is more than worth the experience. I want this, Tara. Tara hugged her friend back. Okay, I'm here to support you. Thank you, whispered Brittany. She gave Tara an extra squeeze. Let's go to the last shop. Maybe fourth time is the charm. The pair headed out to the waiting room to find Dottie and Naomi discussing the merits of gold trim or silver for the place settings. 
Brittany rolled her eyes at Tara and smiled. Either is lovely. There's one more shop we'd like to try tonight, if you're both up for it. Absolutely, confirmed Dottie. I don't understand what the issue is, muttered Naomi as she rose to her feet. Finding her purse, she slung it over her shoulder. Pick the five most expensive dresses out and choose one. I'm not worried about the price of the dress. Quietly, Brittany rebuffed Naomi's thoughts on dress buying. I'm worried about how I feel in it. We will find the perfect dress, assured Tara. The next shop is just a couple of doors down. We can walk to it. Walk? A horrified Naomi asked. Why would we walk when the car is just out front? Mom, it's just a few steps, protested Brittany. It seems a waste to make the car drive all around the block just to drop us off and try to find parking again. I don't know about you, but a walk seems like a good idea to me, inserted Dottie. I need a bit of exercise after sitting down for so long. Perhaps a young woman like you could humor an old lady, Naomi. Mollified, Naomi agreed. Well, I suppose I might be a little stiff as well. As they left the shop, Brittany said a quiet thank you to Dottie, who simply smiled. Passing a couple of stores, Brittany gazed through the glass windows as something caught her eye. There! Pardon? A confused Naomi asked. Brittany was already going inside the store, leaving them all behind. What kind of boutique is this? wondered Naomi, trying to decipher the sign. What does the term a commission shop under the store's title mean? I think it's a second-hand shop, frowned Dottie. Odd that they would have one of those on this street. It's not second-hand, Tara quickly replied. She was certain Naomi Crawford had never been in a store which sold used items in her life. Herding the two older women into the store, Tara looked around several displays trying to find Brittany. Finally spotting her talking to a woman at the back, Tara headed towards her while Dottie admired an old-fashioned tea set. Brit, whispered Tara, I'm not sure your mother's constitution can handle this. Just don't tell her, Brittany quickly instructed before turning back to the saleswoman. Could I try it on, Linda? Absolutely, replied Linda. She led Brittany and Tara to the front window, where she gently pulled a dress off the display mannequin. It is a T-length half-sleeve with lace and tulle, vintage wedding dress from the fifties. The seller's grandmother was a dressmaker, and the bride it was designed for never picked it up. I guess it got put away and the seller found it. She decided it should go to someone who would appreciate it. The seller? frowned Naomi in uncertainty. Don't you mean the designer? This isn't designer, explained Linda. The dress has been handcrafted here in the city. Fortunately, it was stored correctly, so the lace and silk didn't yellow with age. Brittany fingered the dress in delight. It is beautiful. This dress is not what we are looking for, sniffed Naomi. Classic, with long lines and a fitted bodice. A designer creation is what we're looking for. There's a change room in the back. Try it on, urged Linda. Brittany nodded, carefully taking the dress, clutching it to her as she made her way to the back of the store. Tara followed her. It is not appropriate, a disapproving Naomi stated. The dress is pretty and unique, mentioned Dottie, like Brittany is. A bride should be called beautiful on her wedding day, not pretty, admonished Naomi. What kind of store is this, anyway? It's filled with all sorts of odds and ends. That's because it's a commission shop, clarified Linda. Everything you see here is previously owned by another person. They and the shop split a commission every time a sale happens. Naomi gasped in horror. You mean the items here are used? Most things in life end up used, dryly stated Linda. Where do you think fully usable items go? I'm sure. I have no idea, huffed Naomi. Brittany! Brittany Helena Crawford! I will not have you wear a used item of clothing! The dress was never worn, pointed out Linda. Naomi, listen to the lady, scolded Dottie. The dress is a lovely vintage piece. Naomi was beyond listening. She screeched, Brittany! Mom! A horrified Brittany approached from the back of the store, tailed by Tara. What is going on? Do you know what this place is? Hissed Naomi. 
You need to get out of that dress right now. It could have bedbugs or fleas. I assure you, it does not. An unimpressed Linda told them. Oh, you are a vision, marveled Dottie. I think it suits you perfectly. There aren't any mirrors in the change room, mentioned Tara. How is she going to see herself? There's a full-size mirror right over here, pointed out Linda. I keep it here because I always like to see how the clothes look on customers. Brittany, this is not a designer gown, whispered Naomi. This isn't what you wanted. Let the girl decide for herself what she would like, spoke Dottie. She's the one getting married. Brittany paused as she caught sight of herself in the mirror. Her expression softened as she took in the length and delicate lace. One moment, I think I have the crowning touches, mentioned Linda. She plucked a flowered headband off a shelf and a pair of silver satin spool heels with blue bows, bringing them over to Brittany. I hope the shoes fit. Quickly, Brittany put on the shoes. Linda gently placed the headband in her hair. It has blue and white flowers. Slowly, Brittany started to smile, looking at the completed picture in the mirror. She moved from side to side, admiring herself. Just the right shade. Tara gave Linda a thumbs up. You look so darling, cooed Dottie. Gabe will be just amazed. Brittany, you can't be considering this whined a concerned Naomi. This is my dress, breathed Brittany in delight. I'm getting married in this dress. I don't even want to take it off. Naomi gave a moan of disappointment. Dottie gave Naomi a pat on the arm as she beamed at Brittany. This is just wonderful. I'm going to love her as a daughter-in-law. I'm looking forward to having three new women in the family. After paying for the dress and accessories, Brittany had each of the ladies dropped off at their homes before the driver took her to Gabe's condo. Careful not to wrinkle the dress, she happily took the items to her new home. The facial recognition software automatically unlocked the door for her, which Brittany had to admit was handy, since she didn't have to fumble through her purse for any keys. Humming, she opened the door to find Gabe working at his laptop. Brittany gave a little twirl with the dress bag, grinning at him. I found it. Perplexed, Gabe looked at the bag she held. It looks a little short. The dress is T-length, she explained happily. I have no idea what that means, he admitted, setting aside his laptop. Did Mom like it? She loves it, beamed Brittany. T-length means it goes just past my knees. Are you going to show it to me? he wondered. No, replied a pert Brittany as she put down her purse and bag of accessories. Surely you don't believe it's bad luck for me to see the dress before the wedding. Gabe scoffed. I want it to be a surprise, chirped Brittany over her shoulder as she put the dress in her bedroom. Coming back out, she grew more serious. There is something we need to do, and I'm not certain if you will agree. Gabe sighed as he got up from the sofa. Is it on the list? I already told you I truly do not care what cake flavor we have. The cake is all up to you. This is not about the cake. This is a little more important to me, admitted Brittany. They had both sat down together and started a list of what needed to be done before the wedding, delegating duties to each other. Brittany had loved how he had participated willingly in the project. She felt like they were finally on the same team working together towards the same goals. Then what is it? frowned Gabe. He could see how nervous Brittany was getting and didn't like it. Whatever she had up her sleeve, she was worried about his reaction. Taking a deep breath, Brittany plunged in. I think we should kiss. Whatever Gabe had been expecting, it wasn't this. Excuse me? First, it would look odd if our first kiss is at the wedding. I mean... We could tilt our head in the wrong way, bump noses, make it terribly awkward, and we don't want to be embarrassed in front of all of our guests, rushed Brittany, trying to convince him. It would come more naturally if we practiced. Second, we're going to have to get used to kissing. There's a honeymoon coming very soon. Third, oh dear, I've forgotten what came third. Brittany's brows pinched together as she tried to think of more practical reasons to get Gabe to kiss her. Gabe mulled over what she had said. His stomach clenched at the thought of kissing Brittany, 
but she did have a point. He did not want either of them to be embarrassed at the wedding ceremony over a simple kiss. Kissing Brittany was bound to be awkward for the first few times. Gabe, ventured a cautious Brittany, interrupting his thoughts. What do you think? I suppose I agree, he admitted. Oh, said Brittany, a little relieved. I thought I would have to try harder to convince you. What you said makes sense, shrugged Gabe. I was thinking perhaps a good night kiss each night, suggested Brittany, hopefully. Gabe swallowed and nodded. There really was no point in putting it off. It was time for what had become their nightly routine. Britt would have the bathroom first, then he would. Then usually they said good night and settled in their own rooms. You don't have to look so grim about it, muttered Brittany as she went to her room. Feeling flustered, Gabe began packing up his laptop, concentrating on the task. Brittany marched out of her room, pajamas in hand as she stalked to the bathroom, shutting the door with a little more force than necessary. Gabe shut his mouth. Whatever he might have been about to say left unsaid. Annoyed, he went to his room, yanking off his tie and jacket. Brit was a prickly thing. One moment she was all smiles. The next she was irritating and frustrating to be around. He had agreed with her, hadn't he? Why on earth was she so upset? He just didn't understand her. Undoing the buttons on his cuffs, he came out into the hallway as she was about to deposit her clothes into her bedroom. Gabe ignored the sight of her in the pajama tank top and shorts. It wasn't sexy at all, in his opinion. Why are you mad at me? I agreed with you. She huffed, stalking back towards the bathroom. You had an expression like I asked you to kiss a fish. What? Gabe didn't even know how to respond to what she had said. He trailed her into the washroom. You looked like you would rather kiss a fish than kiss me, the woman you're about to marry, explained Brittany as she brushed her hair. It's really confidence-inspiring. If that's the way you look at me right now, like I'm some cockroach you need to deal with, then how is it going to look for all the guests at the wedding? I would like them to think you at least like me as a person, rather than despising me. I don't despise you, defended Gabe. He had no idea how they had gone down this rabbit hole of reasoning. Brittany set the brush down, turning to look at him. You have always disliked me, Gabe. Everyone knows it. I ran into Shelby Greshel today while dress shopping. She was astonished that we were getting married. The first words out of her mouth were, Wow, stocking has really worked for you. You must have worn him down, Britt. I honestly thought it would never happen, especially after prom, but miracle of miracles, you must be so happy. I'll send Gabe my condolences. She did not say that. A stunned Gabe managed to reply. She did, affirmed Brittany, hurt in her eyes. She and all the other people of our acquaintance are thinking the same thing even if they're being nice to our faces. Brittany Crawford, whose family has always been barely respectable thanks to my father's subservience to David Ramsley, has snagged herself Gabriel Ramsley by simply wearing him down after years of making a fool of herself. Who cares what Shelby Greshel or the rest of them think? asked Gabe, trying to digest what Brittany said. I don't, shrugged Brittany. Then she sighed. I do care. I've always cared. They don't accept me, and they never will. You think I would be used to being not good enough for them or for you by now, but it still hurts. Who said you weren't good enough for me? frowned Gabe. You did. Multiple times. You, your brothers, and your cousins. Every time I tried to be friends with you when we were young, or when I had my misguided attempts to get your attention later, I was put down and laughed at by the Ramsleys confessed Brittany. People follow your influence, Gabe. You and the Ramsleys are popular and leaders in society. When you scoffed at me, all the others did too. Brit. Once again, Gabe didn't quite know what to say. He hadn't realized how his actions had affected her. He felt remorse about how he had handled things. I know you're only doing this for your dad's ultimatum. If there had been someone else available, I'm sure you would have picked them. You don't even want to kiss me. And it's time I accept I'm not the one for you. Tara's right. 
I want more from you than you're willing to give, whispered Brittany, looking down at the ring on her hand. She slipped it off, setting it on the countertop. I'm sure your secretary, Jessica, would love to marry you. Stunned, Gabe watched as Brittany walked out of the washroom. Grabbing the ring, he followed her, his longer stride catching up as she opened the door to her bedroom. Go away, Gabe. She sniffed, blindly tossing pillows off the bed onto a chair. He didn't think about it. He didn't try to say anything to change her mind. Instead, Gabe took her by the arm, turning her to face him. With both hands, he cupped her face, lifting it up towards him as he lowered his own, kissing her. It didn't take more than a moment before Brittany softened against him, leaning forward and fisting her hands into the front of his shirt as he took the kiss deeper. So this was what it was like, kissing Brittany Crawford, a foggy part of his brain mused. Champagne, strawberries, and something much more. Something deeper drew him in and left him wanting. He wanted to protect her from anyone who might think she was lesser than them. He wanted to be her champion, her hero. That thought scared him more than anything. Breaking it off, Gabe drew in a roughened breath. Brittany's hand trembled as he put the ring back on. Or maybe it was his hand which was trembling. Gabe tried not to think about it, tried not to look at her parted lips or two bright eyes. Keep the ring on. Gabe's voice was rough as he said the words, rougher than he intended. Abruptly, he walked out of the room, retreating to his own. Unbuttoning his now too tight collar, Gabe leaned against the door, his heart pounding. He could admit to himself he was afraid. Afraid of Brit and all the things she represented. She wanted trust and honesty. She wanted all of him. Everyone had secrets, even those they didn't want to keep. Everyone lied to each other, and relationships weren't built on trust. They were built on keeping the illusion of happiness to everyone around the couple. A simple agreement of keeping up a facade, so no one really knew what was happening behind closed doors. Gabe's stomach turned a little sour. He didn't want an illusion. For a moment, he thought about what it might have been like if his trust in relationships hadn't been shattered long ago. Maybe he would have given Brett a chance at some point. Probably during high school, or maybe afterward when he had seen her at a random party at college he might have given her the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps he would have viewed her feelings with less cynicism and have gone dancing with her at the sock dance in grade nine when she had asked him. Maybe he would have been capable of returning emotions with equal enthusiasm. As it was, all he could feel was this overwhelming doubt he could make this work. Britt wanted a happily ever after. And those were just mirages. She was bound to be hurt once the illusions were broken. How could Gabe be her happily ever after, when he was keeping the secret from her that his own father had been the one to start the investigation that had put Erwin Crawford into jail? If you enjoyed this chapter of Convincing Him, Book 9 of the Ramsley Brothers series, don't forget to hit the like button. This is an easy and free thing for you to do, and it helps move the YouTube's algorithms, and I really appreciate that. Thank you very much, and happy reading!